Hello, John here. Coming up with our in-depth dive into the ASUS BIOS. This next set of videos is going to go into some basic BIOS tweaks. First up is DOCP. Stay tuned, the results were a little surprising. In today's video, we're going to go through how to set up your memory to utilize DOCP, which stands for Direct Overclock Profile, which is ASUS's term for XMP on AMD systems. As a reminder, we are using a Ryzen 5600X CPU-based system. Our motherboard is ASUS's B550i, which is an ITX board. In addition, our system has two sticks of RAM totaling 32 gigabytes. There are two ways to enable DOCP. In easy mode, go into DOCP selection and change it to one of the profiles. In this case, there is only one, so that's the one we can change it to. Alternatively, in the advanced mode, go to AI Tweaker, and in the first entry, which is AI Overclock Tuner, select DOCP, an option will appear underneath, again, giving you the option to pick from multiple profiles if there's more than one available. Once you've done that, you now have your memory hummering along at a higher speed. What does that mean for performance? For this video series, I've picked out a number of benchmarking tools to test all the changes that we'll be making in these videos. More information on these tools can be found on my website, pcbytes.net. That's pcbytes.net. I've attempted to choose some benchmarking tools that reflects my real world usage. First up is the game Civilization VI. This is one of the few games that I play on PC and I just love it. The game has a couple of benchmarking options and I'm using the Gathering Storm AI test. Next is 3D Mark, a good general benchmarking tool. I'm using the Time Spy version of this test. Next, I'm using the Blender benchmarking tool and using two of their tests, BMW and FishyCat. Most, mostly because I like saying FishyCat. And then lastly, I'm using a Premiere Pro benchmark from Puget Systems. I've started using Premiere Pro, Pro easy for me to say, Premiere Pro to put together these videos, and I thought this would be another good test. So how do we do? In this chart, you can see how overclocking the memory helped or didn't help in these various scenarios. In order to make the chart the most useful, I normalized all of the non-DOCP results as a score of 100 and then reflected the relative change to that score for each of these benchmarks. In most cases, the overclock memory only helped 1.5 to 2.5%. In the Blender tests, it actually performed worse. Why is that? I'm not sure. As I mentioned, I tried to pick benchmarks that would reflect real-world use, and while these benchmarks are focused on CPU performance, I was quite surprised that the Blender tests took longer with DOCP enabled. To confirm that DOCP was in fact working, I then did a passmark memory test, and as you can see, the overclock memory performed much faster. The non-overclock memory was in the 68th percentile, while the overclock memory was in the 89th percentile. Based on this, I'm confident that the memory is humming along much more quickly, but I'm still not, why, I'm still not sure why the Blender results would be worse. At the end of the day, this is an easy tweak and one that everyone should do. And until I'm told otherwise, I'm concluding that the tests I used are just not reflective of the increased speed of the memory. But time will tell. Well, we'll see if my choices for benchmarking tools are at all useful in the next few videos. Um, I am surprised by the Blender results, and I'm going to do some research to find out, to see if I can find out what happened with that. In the meantime, now that we have the memory overclocked, next up is Precision Boost Overdrive. Thanks for watching. If you're finding these videos interesting, please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one.